said your love you said your love will never never give up and you said your grace is always enough you said your heart would never forever forget or never say isn't that amazing come on you said you said i'm saved you call me yours you said my future's full of your one thing he said anybody know that the Lord knows how to make a way where there seems to be no way right now in this moment we speak it and we declare it I know you'll come through this mountain is moving I fix my eyes on you if you said it, you'll do it. Oh, because you are God, no matter the odds, the outcome, the outcome is always the same. The words on the pages, the words on the pages, the promise you made us still have the final say. Come on, say. You won't make a way. Come on, that's it. You will make a way. Always make a way. I won't fear tomorrow, cause you're already in it. My hope and my future is already written. This morning, you won't make a way.
sometimes the way that our circumstances look seems like there's no entrance there's no way for him to get in there and turn it around but this is what we speak this morning nothing's too hard for you impossible's what you do I know you got this too impossible's what you do nothing nothing's too hard See a wall that's taller than tall. Just know that he will he'll make another way, another way. It doesn't matter what it looks like, feels like, sounds like. He'll make another way. Yes, he still makes. Still making way. He's still healing. Still making way. He's still providing. Still making way. He's still keeping. Still making way. He's still opening doors. Still making way. I know, I know. Still making way. I know, I know. So he's still making way. Still making way. make way oh he's still making ways yes he is you will 
make a way Always make a way Think about your problem He will make a way Always make a way He will make a way He'll always make a way Thank you, Lord. He will make a way Always make a way. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. If this is your first time at Bonita Valley, we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the service. If you want some info on BVCC, simply complete our online connect card. Here's how it works. Scan the QR code you'll find in the seat pocket in front of you with the camera on your smartphone. Open the link that will take you to Connect Card. You'll find a number of connecting options, including first-time guests, prayer requests, I want some info on a Bonita Valley ministry. Check the appropriate connection box you're after. Push Submit, and we'll get back to you ASAP. And if you are a first-time guest today, please stop by Guest Central at the end of this service and pick up a special gift bag we have just for you. We'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about some things coming up for you and your family at Bonita Valley. Every week, hundreds of Bonita Valley volunteers give their time to serve in our lobbies, kids' classes, parking lot, production teams, youth ministry, and pretty much everywhere. Our volunteers are the heart of our church. So if you're currently on one of our teams, we want to say thank you with a special night that's all about you. The night will include a casual dinner, fun surprises, music, and an inspiring message of appreciation to equip us for the next season of life-changing ministry at BVCC. All you got to do is do what you do best, show up. Mark your calendar and we'll see you Monday, September 18th at 6 p.m. for Volunteer Appreciation Night. Thank you, volunteers. We love you. Membership matters. Everyone who attends Bonita Valley can count on BBCC, but members of those Bonita Valley can count on. Pastor Jeff will be teaching the next 101 membership seminar on Sunday, September 10th, from 5 to 7.30 p.m. in the Life Center Gym. A casual meal and childcare will be provided. Sign up online at bonitavalley.com slash base class. Bonita Valley is excited for the month of September. Why you ask? Because so many great and joy-filled growing and connecting opportunities are almost back for you, your family, and your friends. On Monday nights, we host a super fun fitness experience called Dance Fit at 6 p.m. in the Life Center Gym. Followed by Moms Connected for moms with kids of all ages at 7 p.m. in the family room. On Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m., Prime Timers gathers for a time of connection, fellowship, and time in God's Word. Tuesday nights provide life-building support groups like Celebrate Recovery, Grief Share, and Divorce Care. On Thursdays, our Women's Bible Study has two opportunities at 10 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. in the Life Center Gym. And our ministry to men gather for their Bible study at 6.30 p.m. in the Family Center. On Saturday mornings at 8 a.m., there's more fitness opportunities with Boot Camp for those wanting to get in better shape physically and spiritually. So mark your calendar and get ready for a great month in September. We believe God has entrusted us to be managers of our time, talent, and treasures. We believe He wants us to use temporary resources to make a real and eternal difference in our world. And that's what giving at BVCC is all about. When we give to God, we see lives changed and transformed, both others and ours. There are three ways to give at BVCC. Online at bonitavalley.com giving, by texting Bonita Valley to 833-303. 9325 or by mailing your offering to BVCC 4744 Bonita Road, Bonita, California 91902. 
During our Sunday services, we offer professionally staffed nursery that will lovingly care for your little one up to two years of age. We also offer an outdoor patio area and a family room with TV monitors for parents who choose to keep children under two years of age with them. Pastor Davida and her team lead incredibly fun ministries for preschool and elementary age children in the Life Center Gym. During today's service, you can take notes, sign up for events, and even give using your smartphone. Simply use the follow the service QR code located in the seat pocket in front of you. Thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. It was Herman Ostry's idea. His barn needed moving to higher ground anyway, and he thought this would be a grand way to celebrate Bruno, Nebraska's centennial. Some had no doubt that with a hearty heave-ho, the barn would go. We're going to be about ready to go, and uh, we're going to thank the Lord for the beautiful day that we are all hoping for. We hope that we can accomplish what we're set out to do here today. We hope to make some history. So everybody out at home, everyone ready. Now very slowly, very steadily come forward, very slowly, very steadily, just beautiful to show, just to show the world how we can work together, just as furious to be. Careful your heels, careful your fiddle, hold on. You're doing a great job. Okay, slowly, 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 slowly,
One of the ways we can shift our heart out of neutral if we find ourselves stuck is choosing to fearlessly live a connected life with other people. Last Sunday, we talked about serving selfie-lessly. Today, we're going to talk about fearlessly connecting with other people. Now, if you're just wondering, is Pastor Jeff ever going to be back? Okay, I'm just letting you, he will be back next week. It'll be a brand new series, and we're excited about that. But he's going to come back refreshed and ready to go. And he's allowed us to just kind of go on this little three-week journey together on this series of just engaging our hearts so that we can shift out of neutral. Because, listen, life happens. And we can find ourselves stuck. But how many know that God doesn't want us to stay where we are? He's always moving in us because he wants to move through us as well. I want to ask you a question. You ever found yourself facing a when life got real moment in your life and had it not been for the right friends at the right place at the right time in your life who knows how your story would have turned out that had it not been for that friendship had it not been for that conversation had it not been for an intervention had it not been for the invitation to grab a cup of coffee or the invitation to step into a Bible study or maybe the invitation for you to just be part of a small group barbecue, who knows how things would have turned out had you not said yes to that and had you not had somebody else in your life at the right time, at the right place for the right reason. But you can flip that as well. Who knows how somebody else's story may have unfolded differently had you not been in their life and they not been in your life. Or maybe, even worse, you found yourself in a place where life got real. And you looked around and you found yourself surrounded by people yet feeling all alone. It's easy to live life by ourselves and alone. It's easy to isolate. We live in a world right now where we can, we can digitally connect with people, but we miss out on that face-to-face connection time, and we can find ourselves internally almost living with a heart that's kind of like the karate kid, right? We're, just get, we're ready to wax on and wax off. We keep people. We only let people get so close before we do our thing, and, and because they're, they're, you know, we've walked through some things, and we've experienced some things in relationships, and we just kind of live our life just kind of guarded and walls up and just just living life that way, and we can find ourselves stuck in neutral relationally, living life to where we just keep people at a distance. And I think for too many people, too many people, oftentimes the one thing that's missing from their life more than anything else are the right friendships. And that's why the big idea that I want us to talk about here today, if there's one thought that I want you to walk out the door with you today, it's just simply this, and it's up on the screen, it's the big idea is this, that we don't just need more friends in our life. This message today is not about, hey, we need to up the quota of friends in our life. We need to fill some new slots and spots with people. Come on, let's be honest, we all live overloaded, marginless, sorry ghostwriter, the pattern is full for our life and there's there's no room and that's that's not what this message is all about what what today is all about is just what my hope is is that we're going to see in three stories that we're going to look at is we're going to understand and see even clearer that we don't just need more friends in our life come on how many would agree with me that we need the right friends in our life at the right place at the right time for the right reason what I've discovered 37 years of ministry 37 years of just walking with others through life, I've discovered not just in the lives of people, but I've seen it in my own life that one of the things that can hold people back and to disengage relationally is fear. Fear of being hurt again. Fear of being taken advantage of again. Fear of being rejected again. Fear of being disappointed and let down by people in the church or anywhere else again. And I include myself in that as well because we can all find ourselves struggling with areas of fear relationally. But what happens when we close ourselves off to people because of fear? What happens is we close ourselves off to the value, the strength, the encouragement, and the wisdom that comes from having the right friends in our life. So here's my question for you today that I want us to look at. What if we chose instead, just a question, But what if we chose instead to live fearlessly connected with other people? Meaning, push past the fear. Meaning, willing to take the risk that we need to 
shift our heart out of neutral, to re-engage our heart if it's been disengaged, and to link up with others so that in those moments when life gets real, you and I never have to look around at the landscape of our life and see ourselves all alone. See, the right friends that we're going to talk about today are not just people in our life. The right friends are fearless friends. But I just want to tell you up front that friendships like that, they never happen by accident. They never happen overnight. And they never happen without some kind of risk. Friendships like that, fearless friendships, happen when you and I choose to plant ourselves in proximity to other people in environments where those kind of friendships can begin, grow, and flourish. I want to ask you a question this morning. I know we have people in our life, but how many of you can use some flourishing friendships in your life? Come on, you need, you need some fearless friends in your life. All right, I'm going to, all seven of you that are out there, you are the ones I'm going to talk to here today. Everybody else is good to go. Maybe you will be their fearless friend. Listen, I'm telling you, listen, I want you to hear my heart on this. This is a message that just resonates in my heart because I've seen too many people be part of the body of Christ but yet live disconnected relationally. It is impossible for us to grow deeper in our relationship with God while we keep people at an arm's length. So what I want to talk about today is just allowing the Holy Spirit to just move and to speak in our heart to just help us to lower the walls in our life, not just for more people, but for the right people, for the right friendships that come into our life so that we can live a life that is fully engaged. Is there anybody in the house that wants to live a fully engaged life? Come on. Can I hear an amen out there? That just simply means I agree. So you agree with that. So we're going to go on this journey together here this morning. So I want us to look at three stories. And each of the stories shows us in a different way that we don't just need more friends. We need the right friends. We need fearless friends. And there's three takeaways from three stories that I want us to look at. Here's takeaway number one. Fearless friends, I want us to see, first of all, are friends who will hold up our battle-weary arms when needed. Come on, sometimes our arms drop and we need some friends to come alongside of us and to hold up our arms. Moses did. And look at the leader he was. He was a man's man. It was a moment in his life where he needed not just more friends, he needed the right friends. You can read about this in Exodus chapter 17. In fact, to set up his story and what happened in Acts chapter 17... Exodus chapter 17, I'm still in last week with Acts chapter whatever. So there's the, the chapter we're going to look at is Exodus 17, but if you read chapters 14 through 17, it sets up the whole story of what happened with Moses. We see in the story, we see where the Israelites, where Moses led them from out of captivity from in Egypt. They crossed the Red Sea. We saw God provide the manna and the, and the quail for food. We see this amazing miracle that takes place in, at the end of, in chapter 17 where water came gushing out from a rock. And it, it's these three amazing miracles, unbelievable miracles that took place in those chapters. And yet it was just days later that Moses and the Israelites found themselves in a battle and on the brink of defeat. You could, you could hit the pause button right here because there's a message right in this point of the story even before we even look at the verses of Scripture, friends. That one of the things that we have to always watch for and be on guard for is that you can have a string of victories in your life. You can have success in your life. You can be on the mountaintop right now, but we have to always guard our hearts and be on alert, not fear. We, we live alert because there's an enemy that wants to swoop in to steal what God is doing in our life. That's why we have to always be bad, ready for the battle that can happen after the breakthrough that takes place in our life. So here we look at that scene. This is what's takes, what takes place here in this story where they go from the miracle at Mirabah when the water came out of the rock to what really was a showdown on Raphidim. And we pick it up in verse 8 of Exodus, not Acts, chapter 17. And while the people of Israel were still at Raphidim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. Moses commanded Joshua, choose some men to go out and fight the army of Amalek for us. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hand. And so Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hur climbed to the top, of the top of a nearby hill. As long as Moses held up the staff in his hand, the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he dropped his hand, the Amalekites gained the advantage. Then Moses' arms soon became so tired that he could no longer, what? Say that with me. He could no longer hold them up. Come on, even the Moses in our life gets weary and tired. 
And so Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. And then they stood on each side of Moses, holding up his hands. And so his hands held steady until sunset. And as a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek in battle. Picture this. There on the top of that hill, wavering between victory and defeat, there is this this simple yet profound truth that no matter how successful you've been, no matter how capable you are, no matter how independent you are, there are moments that can happen in our life, even in the Moses moments of our life, where we find ourselves, where our arms begin to drop and we can find ourselves weary and we need other people in our life because life was never meant to be lived alone. There are moments when we just need not more friends. Come on, we need the right friends in our life. We need fearless friends. We need some friends that are willing to climb the hill with us. We need some friends who are willing to hold up our weary arms when the battle gets too much. We, we need some friends who are, who are willing to stay with us until the battle is completely won. Come on, we need people who are willing to come alongside of us to hold up our weary arms. Do you know that our new creation groups, our support groups that we have here at the church, that that's exactly what they're designed to do? That they are designed to help hold up the arms of people who are on the journey right now and in a battle in their life for their, not for, some of them are, but they're in a battle right now and sometimes their arms just get weary and they just drop. And that's what these, these new creation groups are for is to help come alongside them and to help them in moments when life gets real. How many know that life doesn't get more real than when you lose someone that you love? Life doesn't get more real than whether your marriage of three years or 30 years comes crashing down. Life doesn't get more real than when the doctor looks at you and says, I'm sorry, it's confirmed, it's cancer. I've heard those words personally and they are not fun words to hear. That's the reason why we have these support groups that happen throughout throughout the month and especially on Tuesday nights. We have our our grief share that meets at two different times and the reason why why grief share takes place is because they're holding up the weary arms of people who have gone through some kind of loss in their life. We have our divorce care for people who are picking up the pieces from a broken heart, from a broken marriage that takes place, and we're holding up their arms with that. And then we also have our Living Hope Cancer Support Group because we have several in our church family that are on a journey with cancer right now. And you may be new here and you just got a diagnosis and you didn't know that we had a ministry like that. And we have, we have these incredible ministries that are here as part of Bonita Valley. Friends, we can't just do life alone. There are moments in our life, just like Moses, where our arms begin to drop and we need some people to come alongside of us. And there are some, some strategically positioned people that God has placed around you and ministry opportunities for you to step into an environment where you can realize, I don't have to go Go through life alone. That when I find myself in the middle of the battle, I know that God has some people around me that are going to hold up my arms. Come on, when you talk about fearless friends, fearless friends hold up our arms when the battle gets so much that you just begin to become weary and they drop. That's fearless friend takeaway number one. The second takeaway that I want us to look at is that fearless friends are with us heart and soul. Would you say that with me? Fearless friends are with us heart and and soul. One of my favorite stories is found in 1 Samuel chapter 14. It's the story of two fearless friends who not only were willing to fight for what they believed in, but they were willing to fight for each other as well. I don't know about you, not just the guys in the room, I think there's some ladies in the room as well, that they're, <laughs> give, me a, give me a movie or give me a Bible study where there is courage and there is valor and there's something that awakens in my heart. That's what this story does. Come on, I can, you know, listen, I, I'll do the husband thing and I'll watch a chick flick with my wife and I will fight as hard as I can to stay awake while I'm watching it. I, pro- I do, I tell you something, listen, she asked me, are you gonna fall asleep? I said, I'm gonna try not to. I'm gonna do my best to not fall asleep. But I'm telling you, if, if I'm flipping through the channels and Gladiator's on, come on, I, I take one look at Maximus and I'm like, yes, or Braveheart. Even Nacho Libre, I mean, come on, there are, there are these moments where it just causes your heart to come alive. There's movies like that. But how many know there's some Bible characters and Bible stories like that as well? This, for me, in 1 Samuel chapter 14, is one of those stories. See, the setting is the Israelites were fighting their, their regular enemy, the Philistines. And Jonathan, who was the son of King Saul, 
and his armor bearer, someone he trusted with his life, went by themselves to spy on, an, on the Philistine outpost because they thought maybe, just maybe, there's a way to attack it ourselves. So they went and they decided to spy on it by themselves. And what happens next is a picture of what God will do through fearless friends. Verse 4 says this. It says, to reach the Philistine outpost, Jonathan had to go down between two rocky cliffs that were called Bozes and Senna. Come on, Bozes and Senna, two amazing names. Some scholars actually believe that these two rocky cliffs were actually, could possibly have been three miles apart. We don't know for sure, but that's, that's what some scholars believe. We do know this, is that Bozes and Senna, we look at those words, we read those words, they don't really mean a whole lot to us, but what they meant to these two fearless friends is that these were treacherous cliffs that they had to climb down and had to climb up in order to get to the Philistine outpost. Some scholars say that the word Bozes means slippery or shiny or like shale. So I have some hunting friends. I don't hunt. I eat some of the food that they kill, that they give me. I will do that. Sorry to all the pita lovers in the house here or if you are watching online. I I don't apologize for that. I just like I will eat meat if somebody goes out there and provides for my family. We will do that. So, But what my friends have told me is that there are times when they have to go down a hill or up a hill that has, sh- has shale, which is kind of a scaly type rock with some jagged edges to it, and it's slippery. And Bozes had that meaning. It was slippery, it was shiny, it was kind of shale-like, but Senna had a different, Senna was known for being thorny. So imagine that. Think about this in the context of fearless friends. When you, when you think about a fearless friend, Somebody who's willing to traverse, traverse the, the, the rocky places, the slippery places, the slopes and hills in your life, the valleys in your life, the thorny places in your life, and they're, they're willing to go up the hill and down the hill. They're willing to, to do what is necessary to keep you moving forward with what it is that God has put in your heart to do. Watch this in verse, fifth, in verse 5. It says, In one cliff stood to the north toward Michmash, and the other to the south toward Geba. And Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, come, let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised Philistine men. Come on, he's just calling it like it is. Those uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will. Four of the most important verses in this chapter. Perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Do all that you have in mind, his armor bearer said, Go ahead, I am with you, say it with me, heart and soul. Come on, you want a supporting friend who is saying to you, I am with you, heart and soul. What you don't want is somebody who's supposed to have your six, they're watching your back. What you don't want to hear from them is, this is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. You know, you don't want to hear something like that when you're, when you're stepping out to do something that is significant that God is putting in your heart to do. And, and there's a takeaway here that, that I don't want us to miss, and it's, because it's, it's just simply that we, we, we need friends, the right friends. We need friends who will speak both vision and courage to our heart with their words and with their presence. We need friends in our life who speak vision saying, let's go for it. Let's, let's see what God will do. Perhaps the Lord will. Come on, we've heard stories of what God has done. Perhaps the Lord will. We need friends who speak vision to our heart, but we also need friends who speak courage to our heart where they look at us and say, hey, man, let's go for it. Uh, let, let's go for it. Let's, let's just step out and go for it. I am with you. I'm, I'm ready to go for it. And come on, we, we, we all need friends in our life who help us take the next step that we're about to take to climb the hill that is staring at us right in front of us. And we see that in verse 13. Jonathan climbed up using his hands and feet and with his armor bearer right behind him. The Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer followed and killed behind him. In that first attack, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed some 20 men in an area of about half an acre. Now you can read through the rest of that story and the rest of the chapter and what follows is panic 
chaos and confusion and an earthquake is thrown in there. And not only that, what happens is it throws the Philistines into, into just crazy turmoil, just like what Pastor Jeff talked about a, lot, a couple weeks ago with Gideon and how they just began to take each other out. And it's, it's, this, it's this amazing victorious moment with Jonathan and his armor bearer that triggered a victory for the Israelites, right? But it's, 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 that's not what I'm wanting to see is not the takeaway from the victory that they had in the battle. What I want us to see in the point of where I'm going for is I want us to see the two fearless friends. I want us to see that fearless friends are friends who are willing to dream with you, to believe with you, to believe in you. Fearless friends are someone who's not afraid to say, hey, I see what's stirring in your heart. And I am with you, heart and soul. I am ready to go to war with you for whatever God is putting in your heart. I will pray for you. If you want to go to war on behalf of your marriage, I'm there. If you want to go to war on behalf of your family, your sons, your kids, your your daughters, whatever's happening in your life, the dream that you are chasing, I will go to battle with you because heart and soul friends do exactly that. They come alongside, they stand with, they bring vision, they bring courage and You do it together because we all need heart and soul friends in our life, fearless friends, especially for those moments when life gets real. One of the other incredible ministries we have that takes place on Tuesday nights is Celebrate Recovery. It's led by Oscar Stevenson and Irma Velasco. And it's this amazing growing community of people who are all on the journey together with Jesus. They're all, they're all walking through life. Some have hurts, some have hang-ups, some have habits, but they're all on a journey to restoration and, and just God bringing wholeness and healing in their life. And they're a community that supports and stands with each other. One of the ladies that's part of that group, her name is Maria. Sometime earlier this year, she was diagnosed with significant cancer in multiple spots in her body. She started a journey with cancer. And I received word of that, and we actually, on the night that we had our worship night here, I think it was the last week in June, the last Wednesday night in July, we gathered right over here in the front right here. And there's a picture right here. I want you to see this picture right here. What's, you know what's amazing about this picture is, is Maria's in the middle there, and we gathered right over here on the floor, and you've got about 25 family members and friends, but many of them were from the Celebrate Recovery family. And they are standing with her heart and soul. And I want to just tell you, you look at that moment and you look at her story, right? What I want you to understand is that there is an unfolding miracle that is happening in her life right now. We prayed for God to bring healing to her body. And what's happening is there are before and after PET scans. Before that shows multiple spots of cancer and after that shows no cancer at all. She's in the hospital right now because there's one more issue that she has in her lung. And we are believing for God to heal that as well. Can I ask you a question? Is God still a healer? Listen, friends, we can never shrink back from believing that God still can heal cancer. God still can break into the bodies of people who are broken. He can do what seems to be impossible. But there are moments in our life, like we just saw with that picture, we need some heart and soul friends who will stand with us in those moments and say, hey, I am with you with whatever you're walking through right now, and I am not going to walk away because I want to be one of those friends because I may need you in my life one day. That's the power of the mutual dynamic that happens when we walk with fearless friendships and live fearlessly connected. But there's one more. There's one more takeaway that I want us to look at from one more story when we talk about fearless friends. Fearless friends are friends who stick with us through seasons of loss and disappointment. Come on, we all need friends. But we need some fearless friends who are willing to stick with us through loss that happens, and disappointment that happens in different seasons of our life. I think most of us are familiar, very familiar with the book of Ruth. Four chapters that weave just this powerful story of how God can use a fearless friend who sticks with us when it seems like all hope is lost and They become the catalyst that God uses to bring healing and recovering to an area of your life that you never thought was going to happen. You look at the backdrop of this story. There was a severe famine in the land of Israel. And one one of the guys, his name was Elimelech. He and his wife Naomi and their two sons went to the neighboring land of Moab because they thought they could find some food there. 
And what happened over the next 10 years was just this incredible one tragedy after another. First, Elimelech died. The two sons, they meet some Moabite women and they marry them. But sometime later, the, the, the sons die as well, leaving Naomi and the two daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth. There's a moment that happens somewhere later where Naomi hears that there's bread back in Bethlehem where she came from and she wants to go back home. And she starts out on the journey with, her, with Ruth and with Orpah. And then somewhere along the way as they're walking, she looks at them and she tells them, you need to go back home. Go be with your families. But they said, no, we're coming with you. And she looked at them and she said, why? Things are more bitter for me than they are for you. And not only that, she went on to say, the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. You ever been there? You ever found yourself so confused, so broken, so bitter, that it just seems like God has raised his fist against you, broken and bitter over some kind of loss in your life, over something you've lost or someone you've lost? Maybe it was the loss of a dream. Maybe it was the loss of a marriage. Maybe it was the loss of a child. Maybe it was the loss of, of someone in your life that you love. Whatever kind of loss it may have been and you find yourself in this place where you, you just feel like all of heaven has postured itself against you. That the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. And we can find ourselves just living in a way where we not only push God away, but we push away the people that he has positioned in our life that he's going to use to bring the healing that we need in our life as well. It's this amazing story that takes place. You look at Orpah. Orpah heard, <laughs> she heard Naomi say, the Lord himself has raised his fist against you. She said, yeah, I'm going to bounce. I'm out of here. I'm going. And she went back home. But Ruth, her response is just this amazing example of what a fearless friend looks like. Look at this in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. It says, but Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. Put another way, Naomi, you are grouchy. Naomi, you are not easy to be around. You are depressing at times, but I want, to know, I want you to know this. I'm with you. I am all in, and I will go where you go. I will be that person. I will be that friend in your life. Listen, we have no idea the difference it can make in our life when one friend simply says, I'm not leaving. I am here. I'm going to go through this with you. And what unfolds in the next three chapters is this amazing love story between Ruth and she falls in love with a guy named Boaz and they get married. And, and what happens oftentimes is that their romance overshadows this incredible friendship between Ruth and Naomi. But they needed each other. See, Ruth would find love again. She falls in love with Boaz and she marries him. But it would have never happened had she not been connected because Boaz was a relative of Naomi. So then somewhere later, Ruth gets pregnant. She gives birth to a child. And, and that son that she gave birth to filled the soul of Naomi that had been filled moments earlier with bitterness and with death. And now instead it's filled with life and love. Can I just tell you today that God is the great connector of the dots in your life? That you may be in a, in a spot, in a dot in your life right now that feels like it's just death and bitterness that is there. But there is a moment in your life, if you will let it happen, where he will bring life and he will bring love again. He can restore what it seems like the devil has stolen from you. That's the God we serve. And we follow him. And then verse 16, it says, Naomi took the baby and cuddled him to her breast. And she cared for him as if he were her own. And the neighbor woman said... Now at last, Naomi has a son again. And they named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. What a lineage. See, God can use the presence of a fearless friend who refuses to walk away to remind us of his presence and his promise that I've not forgotten you, I've not abandoned you, I've not, walk in, I've not walked away, but also I want you to know that your future it's still in my hands. And we can trust him with that. Three stories that we look at real quick here today, each in their own way, are just reminding us and just showing us that 
We don't just need more friends in our life. We need the right friends. We need fearless friends. But I'm telling you that those kind of friendships happen when we choose to live fearlessly connected lives because life was never meant to be lived alone. Here's how Solomon put it in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. He said, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. You know what Solomon's showing us there? He's illustrating for us how the proximity and the presence of one friend's strength can make an incredible difference in someone else's life. It can literally become the turning point in someone else's story. So here's my question for you today. The question for you and the question for me that I have to ask myself is when I look at the landscape of my life and you look at the landscape of your life, can you point to not just people that are around you, can you point to and identify the fearless friends that are in your life right now? Friends who will hold up your weary arms when the battle gets too much. Friends who are with you heart and soul. Friends who are, who are willing to stick with you no matter what season of life you find yourself in. Come on, those are, those are the friendships that we want in our life, right? The friends that we want, the friends that we need. But what happens is, is we find ourselves living in the middle of this tension between the friends that we want and need and how they happen. See, they never happen by accident. We have to create space in our life for friendships like that to be able to begin to flourish and to grow. One of the things that I've discovered in my life, and Joni and I have together, doing life together now for almost 36 years, is that we believe so much in the dynamic of small groups and doing life together, table groups. That there's something power, we need this to be able to celebrate together. But there's something that happens when we, when we circle up, when we gather up in smaller settings and in smaller circles and we lower the window and we let other people into our life. And what we've discovered is that they are an incubator. They're an incubator for the place and the way that fearless connections are born and forged. And we never know when we're going to need that level and depth of relationship. This last April, I got a phone call from a friend who had been part of our church in Vegas when we pastored there. He was part of the church for 15 of the 17 years that we were there. And I, answered, I saw his name come up on my, my caller ID, and I went, whoa. And, and he said, this is my 3 o'clock in the morning phone call. So we had a saying in our church, who are you going to call at 3 o'clock in the morning if your house burns down? When your life falls apart. And he was sharing how his friends that are walking through what he's walking through in his life throughout since this took place in March and then with a phone call in April, that he has some friends in his life who are walking through not just the devastating loss of a spouse, but devastating inf information that came his way as well, along with all of that. And he's got friends that are walking with him, and the friends that are walking through this with him were friendships that began 26 years earlier that happened and were built around pizza, chicken sandwiches, and a pickup truck. I've shared with our guys before in our men's ministry that they, on every other Tuesday night, I started this small group at a place called Villa Pizza, and, and we would gather, we'd eat pizza. One of the guys ate chicken sandwiches, which is probably what I would have to eat now in doing that. But not only that, we, we would pay the bill, walk outside, and we would gather around the bed of a pickup truck, and that, the bed of that pickup truck became a safe place. It became the spot. It became an opportunity for guys to open up, and there were times where guys would open up and they would weep. Sometimes they would confess sin and things that they were struggling with in their life, but what happened is it was an incubator, and it, it, was, it was where the fearless friendships 26 years later were born and were forged. You know what that's called? That's called fearless connections in community. See, community is where we lean into the value and the strength of other people. And the reason why we have to put ourselves in community, not just in a large sense, but in a smaller sense, is because there are moments in our life where we need other people to step in to fill the gaps of our faith. Listen, it, it doesn't matter how many years you follow Jesus, no matter how many Bible verses you memorize, no matter how many sermons you've listened to, no matter how many Bible sours 
Bible hours you have logged studying the Word of God, you and I will have moments in our life, no matter who you are, where our knees will buckle and our arms will drop, and we need a faith-filled friend to come in to fill in the gap of our broken, where our faith is weak. We need some friends to come in. The Apostle Paul wrote about that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. And there are times where we need friends to fill the gap of our faith. But not only that, there are times where we have to be that friend as well. Listen, it's, it's the 59 gap-filling one another's that we read about in the New, in the New Testament. We've got to love one another, serve one another, pray for one another, submit to one another, and just encourage one another. All of those things are there, but they never happen by accident. They don't. We have to choose. See, we don't need more friends in our life. We need the right friends. But in order for that to happen, there's two things that have to take place. And then I'm going to bring this plane in for a landing here this morning. The first thing that has to happen is we have to take ownership for our responsibility in connecting with others. Listen, I can't connect with others for you. And you can't connect with others for me. I have to own that part. I have to initiate. I have to lower the window. I have to open my life up to other people to have those kind of relationships. As a church, we can't create connections for you. We can create opportunities. We can create ministries and we can create environments. But you have to own stepping into those environments for those relationships to begin. But not only that, the second thing we have to do is we have to choose to plant ourselves in a place and in a space where we can grow fearlessly connected and deeper with God and with others. Listen, we don't just need more friends in our life. We need the right friends. So today, today is what's called Connection Sunday. You've been hearing us talk about this. Last year we did it for the first time. This is the day we're outside in the courtyard. You saw it on the way in. All of our ministries, all of our connection environments for the fall are outside in the courtyard. And we have all of our, our ministry and, and group leaders that are out there along with people that are part of those ministries to answer questions. But more than anything, to give you an opportunity to step into an environment where you can grow, you can, you can serve, you'll have opportunities to go deeper in your relationship with God and with others. Here's some up on the screen. I want us to put the list of right behind me. You can see the list of different uh, ministries that are out there. One of the things that I want you to see is that there are opportunities for Bible studies Right now, this, in a couple of weeks, the men's and the women, we kick off brand new Bible studies. Last Tuesday, Pastor Joel kicked off a brand new study with the prime timers. They met in the gym. There's like 90 of them or more that met in the gym, and they're just celebrating and loving life. There's opportunities for you to plug into prayer groups. There's, there's the support groups that we talked about that you can find out more information that are out in the courtyard. If you're here today and you need a marriage tune-up, if you're struggling in your marriage, listen, Marriage Connect is going to start back up on September 22nd. Graceland and Patrick Miller are doing an incredible job in contending for marriages that are just struggling. And there are opportunities for you to step in and to plug in and to be a part of that. If you want to serve on a, on a ministry team, listen, one of the best ways to get connected is to serve on a ministry team. How, much, how many of you that were here last Sunday appreciated the parking team that was out there standing in the rain so that you can come into church safely and exit safely as well and still love Jesus on the way out off the campus? Yeah, they stood there in the rain. They did it because they have a heart to serve. There are many different ways that we can serve the Lord. Listen, I want you to imagine something. Imagine just for a moment a church filled with fearless love, with fearless encouragement, fearless connections of every generation with our kids, with our students, and with our adults, people leaning into relationship in any season that we find ourselves in, people who are just choosing to live fearlessly connected lives. I want to ask one question before you go. Last week, I ended the message by asking the question, where is God giving you an aha moment in your life with serving selflessly? And I want to ask that question here again today. Where is God giving you an aha moment in your life to re-engage relationally with other people, to fiercely connect? Where is God awakening in your life saying, hey, you've been doing life alone long enough. It's time. Where is he putting his finger saying, hey, let's, let's have an honest conversation for why you've pulled back, for why you've disengaged. Let's talk about that hurt. Let's talk about why you pull back from other people and 
let's have an honest conversation with that. But more than that, let's take the next step and let's step into one of those ministry environments so that you can experience a fully engaged life that I have created for you. We don't just need more friends in our life, friends. We need, we need the right friends. Friends who will hold up our arms, friends who are heart and soul friends, and friends who are with us no matter what season of life we find ourselves in. To live that kind of life, to live fiercely connected like that, is one of the most important decisions that you and I can make. And in doing so, it will shift our heart out of neutral, and it will also help us to live the fully engaged life that God has for us. Amen. I want to invite you to stand with me at this time. Don't head for the doors just yet because we're going to close here in a moment. Our pastors and prayer partners are going to come on down to the front. We're going to have an opportunity in just a moment. And you'll be able to check out all the different booths that are out there. And we're excited about that. But I want to pray over you before we go. And just ask for God's blessing and his peace and his favor to be upon you as you walk out those doors and live your fully engaged life. So Jesus today, God in this moment right now. Father, I ask that you would just walk with us and be with us. I pray for every person that is here. Your heart is that we live fiercely connected without fear in our relationship with you and without fear in our relationship with others. And I just pray, God, for for every person that is here, God, who's contemplating, should I or shouldn't I? I pray that everybody that is here, God, help us to take the next step. Help us to sign up. Help us to step into. Help us to engage so that we can live the fully engaged life that you have for us. And if you're here today and you've never given your heart to Jesus, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, in this moment right now, the most important relationship I need is you. And I ask that you would forgive me of my sins, come into my heart, Help me to live a fully engaged life from this day forward. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.